um, I think we're going to get started and we'll kind of catch people up as they um, as they come in. So Vivian had shared the agenda with you and um, we're trying to um, make sure that we have um, that we have, um, you know, we're following the protocol. So um, in terms of minutes, um, our meetings are recorded. So we're relying on the taped recordings to be our minutes. And that's actually on our website. So these recordings are on the website for SBAC. Um, Vivian shared an agenda with you and um, we don't have our superintendent with us for comments. But we do have, um, I wonder if there's anybody here for public comment. Um, nobody? Okay, well, um, we have old business and new business. It's all the same business. We're trying to, um, to look at our budget for 21, 22. Um, and the, yes. I raised you my hand. I raised my hand. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, I, I can't see that. Sorry, Lindsay. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no worries. Um, I just wanted to take this opportunity as you uh, discuss ranking um, one-time funding uses to mention that we have a, a wonderful opportunity to address uh, not only learning loss, but other other um, ways to help our students, and that we shouldn't be necessarily scared by the fact that these are one-time funds. There is a way to balance everything so that um, students benefit, and especially those with greater needs, such as some of our different um, communities, affinity groups, and our special education community. So I really appreciate all of you um, committee members taking our the needs of our students for first and foremost into account as you were ranking all of these um, various uses of the funds. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, do we have any other public comments? And I will look for hands. Okay, so um, hi, Steve. See you've joined us. Um, hi, everybody who has come in. Um, I can put the link to the presentation um, in our meeting, but I'm also going to be sharing my screen. So are we okay with that? Um, oh, my camera looks so. Okay, so um, let me share my screen and take you through our presentation. And I'm assuming everybody can see my screen, right? Thumbs up for those who I can see. <laughs> thanks, Tanya. Thanks, Dan. So um, we're continuing our, um, our discussion, um, budget update and um, discussion of budget priorities. And, um, and what we're going to be looking at, um, we're looking at revised enrollment projections and um, our multi-year projections. We're looking at our um, revised um, spending capacity. BCEP has actually updated, I believe they've updated their slides in terms of what they've taken to the board. And um, I'm also going to be covering what has been board approved. Um, we have a, a great opportunity, um, as was mentioned in public comment, um, for us to look at our one-time funding. And we're um, it's, we're going to be depending on this one-time funding, or we're going to be maximizing the use of this one-time funding. So um, we just want to make sure we know what has already been approved from these funds um, by the board and also what has been approved by BCEP. So it's a bit of a, um, of a piecemeal approach. Um, BCEP takes their budget to the board um, for approval, but of course, if there are any changes um, necessarily, they'll be, they'll be making um, adjustments as needed. 
Um, then we're going to look at what's remaining, um, what did, um, what's already been approved, um, what's still on our um, remaining priorities. And I'm also, we're also going to be looking at it through the lens of the superintendent's priorities. These are just shaded in, um, just a, um, in a different color, and I'll explain that to you as I get to them. And um, the COVID funds are bringing back the COVID tools um, just because it's such a, um, such a, um, so many sources and so many uses and expiration dates and we've used some of the funding, so I've brought that back. Um, I'm also going to be looking at additional need-based requests um, for approval of funds, and um, we're looking at the COVID tracking tool again as well. Um, then we're going to be doing our temperature check, um, SBAC ranking of priorities. Um, we, the, we just completed the form. So if there's anything that's a little wonky there, um, we may have to adjust it, but um, we do want to kind of get an idea of what people are thinking about in terms of prioritizing um, the ranking. And our next scheduled meeting um, is May 18th. Um, we appreciate that the deadline is really tight. Um, we may need to schedule additional meetings um, based on our progress and um, additional needs. So um, if there are no questions, and can I see if there are any, any hands raised? None that I can see. Um, we'll get started. So, so um, this is, um, we've been saying for a while that we're gonna, we're um, thinking that a 7% reduction is um, is what we're expecting um, for 21, 22, and the ex extended years um, and the out years. But of course, we have the um, we have the not luxury, but we have an opportunity to be funded at the prior year based on the way that um, the state funds us based on our enrollment and ADA. Um, now we're looking at our CalPads projections, and I can open this link. Um, if it, it's a year over year comparison and overall um, in line 23, um, they're showing that there's about a 4.4, um, we use 4.5 um, overall change based on October to October. And this is October 1920 to October 2021. So we feel fairly okay at this point, um, looking at our numbers and the impact if we looked at a 4.5 reduction, what does that do to our numbers? And of course, remember, we are still waiting on the May revise and we're waiting on um, the enrollment projections, the updates that will happen after May 16th. So this is an interim step while we kind of wait for additional information um, in terms of um, um, updating our assumptions so of course, we also are looking at the cost of bargaining. We're currently um, in negotiations with BFT and um, we are actually not looking at the impact on, um, on our multi-year, but we know that a 1% cost the unrestricted general fund about $1.1 million. And we're, st we're, um, we're staying with that projection. So let's look at our revenue assumptions and our multi-year projections. So this, this slide is actually the key that kind of explains what we're thinking about and where we're going in terms of our enrollment. So our current enrollment, um, we have the luxury actually of, of using the prior year for 2021. Um, we are thinking the enrollment will actually um, decrease. This is the 4.5% um, decrease. And we're, we're keeping that um, reduction for the out years. Um, our unduplicated um, pupil count, um, this, this number um, showing the current year and the projected three years kind of gives you a little bit more information in terms of where we are now, what we're projecting um, based on um, the, the additional reduction in our UPC students, as well as in the rolling average in our 
um, LCFF calculator. So as a reminder, our LCFF is the local control funding formula. And we actually use um, a tool that's provided by um, FICMAT. And um, that information um, is what all school districts actually use to look at their LCFF funding. And that tells us our LCFF, our funding, our base funding, as well as our supplemental funding. So this, this line um, actually looks at our funded ADA versus our projected ADA. So let's focus on the projected first. So um, with an enrollment of 98.44, our projected enrollment is 94.26. When we look at a four four and a half percent reduction, our projected ADA is 9002. But you can see we actually are funded on the higher of the current year or the prior year. So we are actually funded on 2021. So we have the benefit of um, of the higher in um, ADA for one more year, but you can see the 22, 23 years, which is what we're calling the cliff year, it is reduced, but not as um, drastically as it was before. It's now reduced down to 9,002, and that's what we're projecting for the out year. COLA um, 3.8 for only for LCF funding is slightly less for other programs. Um, and then the 22, 23, this is an average based on two, um, two um, experts in the area, um, our school services and our department of finance. So this is an average and we'll have more, we'll have a definitive um, answer when we get the um, governor's budget, um, which is gonna be later on in this month. So then what does this actually um, mean for our assumptions here? Um, our COLA is listed above um, here. Our ADA funded it now is 9002. And our unduplicated count has not changed. So our total revenue that we're looking at LCFF funding, um, it's 95.8. 93.5 now and 95.5. I have a slide that shows you the um, what has changed um, based on our assumptions um, further on in the presentation. So with our expenses and um, and with the increased funding, we instead of the cliff being um, nine million, it's still is pretty significant. It's six million for us to balance the books in 22, 23, 5 million ongoing in reductions and a one-time reduction of $1 million. Um, that gives us a, um, a barely balanced budget. Um, we're actually, after designations were negative, um, we would adjust the budget adjustments um, or budget reductions or budget increases, revenue increases accordingly to make sure we're balanced um, after designations, but at the moment we're balanced just based on our ending fund balance. So this is, um, this is looking at the difference in our projections um, in terms of what we're funded um, for the 4.5% ADA decline and a 7% 7 ADA decline. So you can see we're funded at um, 9002, 88223. We had we were looking at 8766. So that's an increase of 236, both for 2223 and 2324. Um, no change in 2122 for LCFF because we hadn't changed the assumptions there. But you can see that our LCFF revenue would increase by 2.2 million in 22-23 and 2.1 in 23-24. Um, so what does that do to our um, reductions? We were in, um, for the 7% decline, we we're looking at a $9 million reduction, 8 million um, ongoing on 1 million one time. We're now looking at 6 million ongoing and 1 million one time. So that's a change of 2 million dollars both for the current year and both for 22 23 and 23 24. Um, 
So um, any questions before I move on? So um, so with the with the just to summarize, with the change in assumptions we're looking at um, in the cliff year, um, which is 2223 instead of a $9 million cut, we're looking at $8 million. And instead of eight, we're looking at six in the 23, 24, because only 8 million is actually ongoing. Nicole raised her hand. Oh, I can't. Sorry. Oh, hi, Nicole. Yeah. <laughs> hi, Pauline. Question. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, uh, I might have missed this, but what is the what's the difference between the one time and the ongoing? What's the one million dollar one time um, production? It's just um, the number that we use to balance the budget. We don't need to cut nine million ongoing, so we could yeah. find one time. Um, this this um, balances our budget, so we could cut nine million, but it's not actually necessary for us to balance the budget. So we try to identify one time reductions, um, and the, as opposed to ongoing. Um, so this could be one time revenue that we receive or any um, reductions that might be one time. Okay, so that's a, that's just, we have like an extra deep dip in 22, 23, mm -hmm. and then it goes back up basically 6 million on go. So in that one year, we need an additional $1 million reduction. Right, right. Okay, and, we, and we can identify $1 million in one time cuts. Um, and again, it's, it's just a balancing game at this point, so. Um, is there Thank another? You. Sure, no problem. Any other um, questions? Yeah, Pauline. I this is Steve. Sorry, I could. Hi, Steve. Can't. Hello. Um, so, are you saying it's six, seven plus six, or nine plus eight, or it's the the six million ongoing will? still be 6 million in, in the, so it's not 12 million over two years no. or 13, right? It's no. just the one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a 6 million ongoing that will relieve both budgets and then the 1 million one time. Okay. So, yeah. Any, any other questions? So I left the, um, what we had done before just for comparative purposes. Um, so you can, um, you can um, take a look at these as needed. So, so um, we're still looking at our scorecard. Um, in terms of um, the general fund, um, we're actually, the revenue increase um, is $3.3 million, $3 million from the LCFF. And I think I explained um, there was an, an additional $3 million um, recovering some of the rentals and leases that we would have lost, um, that we lost due to COVID. We're expecting regain at least 300,000, hopefully more, but we're just being conservative and, um, and estimating that at $3 million. Um, cost increases and other sources and uses. I presented this last week, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. Um, so um, the, deficit that we're facing, we're still looking, uh, and this is 21-22. So the change in assumptions does not change, or 21-22, it changes 22-23 and out years. Um, LCAP, um, we're still expecting, they're still having a deficit of over a million dollars um, to balance their budget. Um, so they would need to eliminate expenses of $978,000. Um, BCEP, after they have approved um, their um, budget changes, they're actually um, having an increase of $230,000, um, cost increase um, of $152 um, for their, their, um, their percentage of the cost increases due to step and column stirs and purrs. Um, there are no deficit spending um, by $615,000 for the, based on the budgets that they took to the board. Um, so they must, um, they are now needing to reduce by 5, 5 to 10% per year to balance, um, to balance their budget um, at the end of the measure 2024. 
and they do have $171,000 in one-time Measure A funding. And our um, COVID fund balance is now 13 million after looking at the board approved um, expenses that we, the, the expenses we took to the board last time. Um, so this is again, just our overall challenges, what we're trying to um, accomplish. And um, our, our bottom line is still, um, if we're putting anything into the general fund, additional costs, we will need an equal amount of budget reductions. And that's what um, is expected when we're deficit spending, we have a tight budget. If we're putting something in, we have to take something out. So um, that has not changed. Um, and um, we will then go on here. So at this point, we have resolved some key programmatic desires. Um, we have BCEP funding um, programs. We have COVID paying for our Longfellow seventh period day. Um, we also have um, Brea picking up some additional um, FTE and, um, and some programs in the supplemental budgets. Um, the ANSAT allocation, and we had, um, we had approved the $2 million um, for use of COVID funds for site allocation. Um, what I did, um, I, I kind of summarized here, reminded everybody um, what has been board approved. BCEP has board approved 767,900, and I'll take you through that. This general fund reduction, um, We'll, I'll revisit this. I think it impacts our budget, but we're dealing with so many moving parts. We're trying to still um, revisit some of the issues that the items that we have here and LCAP reductions that, that total $205,000. And this is just um, the impact on other funds based on what the board has approved so far. So, um, this is, can everybody see this or do I have to put this in? Um, is it big enough for you guys to see it? I know Matt showed me how to do presentation mode yesterday. So I don't know if I can find it. I could present and it will be a little bit bigger. Is that better? That should be better, right? So this is just um, just just looking at what BCEP had approved ver um, and what was on our list when we came to you the last time. So now that it's been approved um, either by BCEP student support or their HQI, um, we no longer um, have to, you know, look at it on our project on our um, when we're looking at our assumptions. So this is a summary. Um, BCEP had gone through pretty much, they had approved our Willard math program, the TWA, T2, T2A, T2A immersion support, um, and the various FTEs that they, um, that they approved, the math coach, um, coaching support, chemistry sections, et cetera. Um, and I know how to get back. <laughs> Um, so this other section, they also took, um, they picked up $40,000 for BCEP student support. Um, no, they picked up 40,000 for our black studies um, or African-American success framework. They picked up 60,000. And for the point tape program, they picked up 40,000 and they also picked up um, 3,400 in BCEP and BAPA materials. Um, this this um, this school supplemental grants. This was picked up by COVID funds as well as a data integration um, and science specialist, and the music equity. Um, BSEP picked up the seventy two thousand dollars here, as well as the music and coaching. So um, this I showed this as a reduction in the general fund, and this is what I have to check on just to make sure that that's actually impacting our project or um, the general fund if it was previously funded 
by the general fund. And this is basically our bottom line in terms of what has been board approved, what BSEP paid for from, from their various pockets, their various funding sources, what COVID funds is picking up, um, the impact to the LCAP and the impact to the general fund. So um, we're still pretty, um, we're along, we're not far along in the budget process, but um, we need to remember that $3.1 million, $3 million has already gone to the board and has been picked up um, either by BSEP um, or COVID. Um, and it's relieving um, LCAP to some extent as well as the general fund. So um, with that, um, I, I don't know how many, um, how many people actually saw um, the BSEP budget, but it's, um, it's linked in the document and it also went to the board the last time. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Um, Natasha couldn't be with us this evening, but this is an area that if you had questions for her, she would be willing to answer. Um, and it's, this has already gone to the PO. And I know she's bringing additional budgets to the um, to the board on Wednesday, and I'll reflect the impact on our asks as, as we go along. So where does that take us to? That now um, leaves us with what do we still have left on the table? And this is a laundry list, it's still an extensive list, um, but I will, um, I have a link to the, to the actual document or working document and I've summarized it here. So um, I don't really want to, um, let me put this in present mode so you can see this. So um, we have, we're, we're revisiting the Longfellow Literacy Coach. Um, we had at one point assumed that BSEP was gonna pick up the 66,000. Um, LCAP is asking for this to be funded by alternative sources. But at the moment, um, we are still relying. The general fund has been asked to pick up 44,000. So we're going to revisit that. So one, this is one of the unbalanced items. So you can see the remaining items were either asking for um, the general fund to pick it up or COVID funds will be, um, will be funding this amount. This, um, hold on. Um, this is the other list um, that includes um, Bera. So Bera, um, Bera and BSEP and Bera director, the, the, this is the share um, of the reorg that the general fund is being asked to pick up as well as a comms manager, specialist and our relations, special projects, communications. Um, BSEP picks up a significant amount of this budget, um, but the general fund is being asked to pick up these additional amounts. Um, SPED, um, I had presented this last time. There was an additional ask and I will cover that um, later on in the presentation. Um, McKinney Vento, um, our statutory changes. This is something that um, we were proposing that the COVID funds covers, of course, we're just interested to see um, what um, SBAC is thinking in terms of um, some of these proposals, which we'll be looking at later on in the presentation. So overall, um, we're still, there's still $11 um, million in um, unfunded requests. The general fund is being asked to pick up um, 2 million um, LCAP still needs um, an additional 850 and um, COVID funds is being asked to pick up $9 million. Um, um, before I go any further, I'm going to focus on, I'm going to go back to these slides and um, share with you what is the um, superintendent's priorities. Um, so our superintendent is, is um, interested in um, ensuring that our LCAP, the deficit in LCAP is covered. So the overall LCAP budget and the shortfall that's projected 
um, is an area of concern. Um, families engagement, um, anything that's kind of um, highlighted with this buff color is a priority, um, a superintendent's priority. Um, SPED is also a priority. Um, the, un the unemployment rate, the change, um, that's a statutory change and um, one that um, is of, it's a priority as well. Um, our labor partners and our um, negotiations is, is, uh, is important as well as um, our, tra our um, implementing a new um, enterprise system escape and the cost for that. Um, so we had suggested somewhere here that we um, that we shift this cost to COVID funds. Um, there, another approach could be finding something that is more student oriented um, to be moved into COVID funds and using um, the funding that's not needed to support um, our COVID, um, our COVID. Uh, I mean, our escape, our expense for escape. Um, any questions? Wow, we're getting through this. Maybe I have a question. Uh, let me okay, see. I can't see your hand, but go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, my question is for the supplemental grant that has been approved by the board. I'm wondering about um, the timeline. This is like I'm speaking from a entity perspective. Usually we, we uh, finalize our site plan in May. And I think those grants won't be really approved yet by the by the board. And so with ETC, we are kind of in a, we don't know if we should approve budget with deficit, if, if we hope to have those grants, if we have to ask PT as a plan B. It's, I, I feel as an ETC member, it's very hard to negotiate those uh, timelines and to finalize our site plans. Right, I understand, um, but the, the board previously approved um, on this slide, the board approved the $1.5 million of COVID funds um, and for school supplemental grants. So yeah, they, I, heard that, I heard that at the board, but my question is the timeline until principal know if the grants they put in oh. will be approved and then how uh, how long does that take from that approval to go back to sites? And I'm concerned that we'll be out of school and it's very hard to convene and it's at sea when school is out. Right, and I know I know Ed Services has uh, has shared um, a process with you, right? Um, that should have been, I believe Ed Services has shared a process with you and, um, and we're expecting um, feedback from the sites um, within the guidelines that will allow it to be um, added to your budget. Um, I can have the superintendent speak to this when he comes in because it's an ed services. Um, it's more of an ed services um, item. But um, from what I understand, um, I know there has been a process um, implemented. I'm not sure if it's been shared with the sites, but um, we're we're hoping there's enough time for you to include these in your site budgets. Okay, thank you. Okay, sure. Um, any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. It would now, should if we had a question on certain line items, should we ask you what those are now or? Yes, and I'm hoping I can answer them. I can answer the ones <laughs> that that I know about. But I, um, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Right. Um, one of them uh, that I was wondering about is the. Um, it's small. It's uh, not a small amount, but it's like a really skinny little line. That's a materials and technology replacement. Two hundred fifty k. Is that books and Chromebooks? That would be Chromebooks. And that's actually um, an item that's going to the board for approval. Um, oh, this one here, this technology, um, let me present it. Yeah, that little, 
tiny little one right there. Yeah, yeah that little <laughs> it's kind of squished in. Oh crap, did I? Oh no. Right, so this item, um, this materials and technology um, replacement, we have an item on that that I can, um, I can share with you. Um, it has to do with the lost um, Chromebooks, um, replacing lost Chromebooks. And we also have another item in terms of new Chromebooks. So this was um, something that we thought of pretty earlier, early on in the um, in the process, um, and um, to the extent that we take it to the board and it's approved, because this is now becoming um, a definite need, we will then um, we will then um, adjust this schedule accordingly. Any other questions about any of these? Um, the same slide that was before. Uh, I was wondering if the professional development for uh, integrating ELD strategies into, into the uh, daily instruction was uh, district initiatives or just some sites? And I do not know. I'm sorry. I'll wait for um for Dr. Stevens um, yeah. to talk about that. Okay, um, thank you. No worries. Sorry. <laughs> Pauline, I have a question about just the unemployment rate change. Is that uh, yeah. just because we weren't covered this last year? It was on the page you were just on, though. Yeah, yeah right there. Yeah, this is um, this is a um, a statutory change from the state, and that's uh, um, that's the impact um, of co of of COVID. Obviously, you know they've been paying a lot of unemployment. Um, so this is a proposal. We don't know if it's fully baked, if it's going to materialize. But we've been advised um, this came after our um, after the governor's budget. So as we hear anything that um, that impacts our budget, we include it. So this is a significant um, impact to yeah. our employee costs. So going from 0.5 percent to 1.23 percent is really significant. And um, we are proposing um, that COVID. Um, we can use our SO3 funds um, to cover that. Yeah. And this yeah. Ho hopefully should be a temporary thing huh, for the next yeah, couple of years. We, and well, well, we think it's only going to be one year. We're hoping um, when we go to the governor's budget, we will have a little bit more information on that. Okay. So um, so right now we're, we're treating it as one time and we're trying to use COVID funds to cover that. Any other questions? There's a laundry list here, guys. I mean, you, I'm sure you have some questions about all of this. This is some I see. Um, so um, the bottom line is the general fund is being asked to cover about $2.2 million in additional costs we're deficit spending $700,000. So um, we would definitely need a strategy um, to determine what, which of these we can actually um, use. And of course, our COVID funds, we're trying to uh, maximize um, the use of our COVID funds just to, um, to assist um, with some of these expenses. But of course, our COVID funds are one time, even though some of them actually go all the way through to 2024. Um, the challenge is to maximize the, um, the use of funds and meet these needs. And another thing, of course, that we have to look at um, would be, do we reduce existing programs, existing staffing? How do we actually meet this challenge um, and be equitable? So. Nicole um, has her hand raised. You know, but I, I can't, I can just see like five little, little people on the screen. Yes, Nicole. <laughs> Sorry. Great. Another question. So um, I asked a similar question, I guess, kind of in, I think it was part of the P&O meeting when we talked a bit about this, but it looked like now as you've kind of baked these in more and more, thank you for all your work on that. Uh -huh. um, uh, 
the it looks as though most of the special ed positions are using the COVID one time funds. And I'm wondering how that works, considering that, you know, these are mostly ongoing need is my assumption. Right. So um, that's a good question. Um, and the, it's actually has a two part response. So um, how can we use COVID re, um, resources for SPED needs? My um, our approach is um, because our ESSA 3 funding is the least restrictive. Um, there's a line item in ESSA 3 that says um, existing salaries um, and benefits to, um, to keep the, the, um, the district um, functional or to keep the district going. So the actual strategy would be to move expenses um, into salary, um, salaries and benefits into um, COVID and then free up the general fund to pay for SPED. So we're not asking um, COVID to actually go in and fund these positions. Um, we would transfer um, qualifying expenses out. Um, and at that point, um, if any of these positions are ongoing, we would have to pick them up in, um, in our multi-year projections. So it's still, it's still not fully baked. Um, we're still looking at all the moving pieces. Um, SPED is one of these um, staffing costs. Um, what has not been identified here that we think there may be potential savings. So we're still looking at that in a little bit more detail, but um, it is um, any of these positions, if we use COVID funds um, to the extent um, they're ongoing, we would definitely have um, have an issue. So. Pauline, I have a, I have a follow up question on that. I'm so sorry, that... Stephen. Denise had her hand raised. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Go sorry. ahead. Okay. Um, yes, Denise. I had a question, uh, like like uh, mimicking the 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 ID from the um, district to SSC. How how much has the COVID fund? Would take some of the expense that are now on like site discretionary funds from this end and like be taken by the COVID funds. So we have carryover of this um, site discretionary fund to like, you know, like extend the, um, the, the funding. I don't know if this is possible. Yeah, right. Um, I think if I follow what you're saying, Denise, um, if if you want to use COVID funds and protect um, funding that carry carries over like BCEP, um, is that allowable? It is, um, but the COVID funds are finite. Um, we don't. It's not <laughs> inexhaustible, and you are at the same time competing with all of these asks. So, what we need to do is to rank these asks um, and then determine a funding strategy. So. We don't have here, um, you know, let's protect our our, um, our BCEP funds or our um, site discretionary funds. We're basically looking at um, particular programs, um, new positions, reducing LCAP, um, funding other um, programs or, or escape. So um, to the extent um, that it's not on this list, um, it, chances are it would not we could not use COVID funds to protect um, existing um, funding sources. Does that answer your question? So that means that uh, like COVID funding uh, ideas can come up to be added to this list of priorities, but it's outside what the what the BCEP discretionary fund is already taking or thing like that. I think it's the same question of the special uh, special ed position. If they are taken by COVID, it's one time. So I think yeah. it's a similar question. You see again, I didn't get that. Yeah, I, th I think the, the question is related to the question to special need. Mm -hmm. Like if, if it's taken I mean, had to be taken by general fund because it's not a one-time need. Right, right. So, so, so once once we determine um, the use of our COVID funds, if we're funding um, expenses that are not one-time, 
then we have to address it um, in the multi-year projections for other funds. So, yeah, okay, that's that correct. Thank you. Okay, sure. Uh -huh. Anything else? I see two. Who was next, um, Vivian? Stephen. Oh, Steve. Oh, me. Yeah, sorry, I can't. My the raise your hand is not on my screen for some reason. So, um, okay. so you, so Pauline on the um, on the positions listed for SPED, are those new positions to be added, or are those existing positions where we're trying to transfer expenses? These are um, new positions, and um, there is a link here to Sean's um requests um the we negotiated um case caps for sped um for our sped teachers so this additional ask um the five hundred and forty thousand dollars has to do with an um a negotiated item that relates to case caps so we are going to need additional staffing to meet the case caps requirement um for this amount here. And I'm reluctant to go into this without having our sped person here, but let's give it a shot. Let me see if I can open this link. So this is um this is Sean's draft of what he's thinking about um, in terms of, and I don't know if this has been updated, <laughs> But this is what he's thinking about in terms of additional staffing. So, um, and we keep refining these numbers. So we will bring it back once it's totally baked. Um, but this is the information that we have so far in terms of um, his, uh, his asks for additional needs. Um, and this is our, this, this has to do with our summer assessment though that we'll talk about in a little later. So, so, any, so anything on that list that we fund with COVID money this year, we're going to need to find money for it again next year, right? Unless it's part of a plan that is to um, that is a one-time um, approach, um, I would suspect that our cases would continue at that level. So he would need the five forty to be ongoing, but I can't really speak to um to each of these other um stipends i mean the general funds picking up is asked to pick up twenty five thousand dollars but he's suspect he's going to need um additional staffing for mod severe and mild mod um school psychologists um and i don't know why this has a different dollar amount um yeah there's a lot of a lot of money in there <laughs> Yeah, and, okay. it, and this this doesn't actually um, transfer over. So um, people have been going in and using this as a working tool. So they have been kind of changing the numbers, but I would I would look at the total transactions and not really what's being asked for from COVID. Um, I thought we had fixed these actually. So that's the, um, the, the superintendent's priority. Um, like I mentioned before, it includes LCAP, it includes um, our labor partners, um, ESCAPE, SPED, and various other, um, the unemployment rate, as well as um, family engagement. Um, the African-American success manager is also a priority that I missed earlier. Um, any other questions? Um, okay, so um, I'll take us through COVID funds. And I just wanted to, um, as we start um, thinking about relying more and more on our COVID funds, just want to share with, um, with the group um, our strategy um, for planning and communication for the funds um, and who's involved and who, what role they're gonna be playing. And then we also have additional need-based investments um, for our COVID funds. So first of all, um, it's a 
Uh, let me move this out of the way. It's a multi-perspective approach. So we have our superintendent who's, go, who's communicating the needs, um, coordinating the planning, board communication, stakeholder communication, and public relations. Our Ed Services obviously has to establish priority service areas. And as a reminder, the LCAP is a roadmap for the entire district. Um, and Ed Services should be collaborating with sites, regarding instructional needs and um, funding allocations um, should be directly related to students' needs um, to the extent possible and to fit within the needs of um, our COVID funds. Um, why isn't this going down? I'm gonna get out of this. Uh, Okay, and then um, then we come to um, business services. You know, our our role we're looking at the funding allocations, and communicating the plan for spending. Um, we're looking at estimated costs in each service area, and then um, this is the what what everybody is alluding to um, the details of temporary funding between the time of availability. So yes, we're putting a lot of um, expenses on. COVID, but when it's no longer available, how does that impact programs and our, um, and our staffing and expenses? And of course, human resources is going to be looking at the staffing. Um, if we implement long-term staffing, um, would they be laid off um, if the funding is no, when the funding is no longer available? Um, the recruitment plan, for spending some of this um, one-time money is critical. And um, we need to ensure that um, our labor partners are aware of staffing and calendar changes. So um, I thought this was a good slide because it kind of focuses everybody in terms of who is involved, who is doing what, and what each person's role is. So now this brings us to um, additional need-based in investments. Um, remember, we took um, the funding for um, our for funding our school plans, um, the two million dollars, and we took some other items um, for COVID. It was like two point three million dollars. Um, this board of education meeting um, tomorrow. Um, we've identified um, additional expenses that. Um, are pretty critical and time sensitive. So, um, and this is a, not the best way to go about budgeting, um, but um, we're on, these are unusual times. And we, you know, with so much one-time funding and with COVID and trying to meet everyone's needs, it's, um, it's not the ideal approach, but um, these are other expenses that we're thinking of taking to the board tomorrow. So this is what um, what we were talking about earlier um, in terms of our technology replacement. And these are needs that come up as we're talking. These are needs that just come to the surface as, as, as staff are aware of them. So we did talk about the $250,000 for the unreturned um, and the broken Chromebooks. Uh, we loaned these to stu students over the course of the pandemic um, we don't think we're going to get them all back. Um, and if we get them back, um, we're going to need staff's time to collect, clean, repair, and restock them. But we also think we're going to need additional Chromebooks to support um, um, take, um, well, take home, it says here, for next year. So in addition to replacing the ones we have, um, we anticipate there's going to be a need for the upcoming year. And then we're also going to need staff time. Um, so that's a $550,000 investment that we're asking to be paid for using COVID funds. Um, this is our special ed need um, for summer assessments. And the superintendent has been working closely with special ed to determine um, what's needed for our summer assess assessments. And this is $180,000 um, 
one time because it's just for summer. And um, you can see the listing of staffing here that um, Sean has indicated he needs um, for the summer assessment um, special ed um, purposes. Um, this is our, this is on our list, but we're, um, we might not take this to the board, but this is something that we feel strongly about in terms of revamping our enterprise system. It will assist us with our payroll process, our HR, financial systems, um, something that has needed overhauling for a while. So some of this is one-time expenses and some of this would be um, um, ongoing. But um, in terms of um, the cost of our existing program, I think, our, um, which is QSS, I think we're looking at like $150,000 a year so this is a significant increase, um, but we think it will pay for itself um, in over the next few years in terms of efficiencies. Um, we wouldn't have to be writing checks. Um, right now, um, our IT departments, um, they print our checks. Our checks are taken to Alameda County Office of Ed where they're, where they're signed then they come back. So that's um, in terms of timing and efficiencies, if we need an emergency check, there's really no such thing unless we do a manual check. So, um, so we'll be meeting um, with um, ACOE and our constituents um, and trying to get this implemented, not in 21, 22, but we'll be implementing like going live in 22, 23, but we'll have to be investing in 21, 22 to make this happen. So this is a significant, um, a significant ask, um, but one that the district um, and um, cabinet, we feel strongly that um, we need this, um, th we need this um, improvement in our enterprise system that will assist us in, um, in all our, in all our um, departments, payroll, HR, finance, um, et cetera. So this is, um, this is um, another area that we're looking at, um, our graduation events at Berkeley High and the middle schools. Um, I think this number is actually closer to 13, but um, we're allowed to do in-person graduation. And I believe the superintendent shared this with us last time. But um, we're going to be doing um, in-person graduations for the high school, the middle schools, um, and our elementary schools. So we're, we're now faced with um, facilities preparation, overnight security, rentals, live streaming production. So we're using um, uh, an agency to assist us um, in, in getting these um, um, promotions together. Um, we're, we're challenged further, the elementary school, all of them are happening on the same day. The high school will be happening over three days. And I think the middle school is one day, um, but several events on the same day. So a lot of challenges, a lot of um, moving parts, a lot of coordination. Um, the total cost that we're, look with, that we're asking for from COVID funds is $167,000. And for the high school, the general fund is picking up um, $180,000. Um, but this is, um, this is significantly more because this is like a $260,000 $260, ask. But this is small graduations, three um, over three days. I think they're probably gonna be closer to 13 graduation. So a significant cost, but um, the need for our students to feel connected and feel a sense of normalcy, if you will, um, um, I think we think it's warranted. Um, I'm working closely with the high school in terms of their budget and the logistics just in terms of coordinating everything. So an expensive ask, but one that we feel um, is warranted at this time. So um, let's see. So for um, so for our COVID um, asks, 
um we these were the ones that went to the board the last time april 24th the restore to restart school grants um and the pilot for longfellow and the braille and then now we're looking at 550 for the technology replacement the summer assessment for sped and graduation costs so that's an additional eight hundred and ninety seven thousand dollars um which leaves a balance of about 13 million in our COVID funds I'm going to do a time check. Um, um, any questions about that, or any um, anything, any opinions, any anything that we'd like to share? No. Okay. Well, this um, this you've seen this tool already. Um, this is the tool to our um, our COVID um, funds. Um, oh, I want it open. Let me go back. Hold on. Um, you can open this. Um, I've kind of added in um, the additional costs that we've spent. Um, eight point two, and now another two point three. Um, million dollars, including the asks um, from last board meeting and this board meeting. So we have approximately $13.9 million in unspent fund. So um, again, um, ESSER is our least restrictive um, funding and it expires in September 2024. So this would be after you know the budget season for um, our 2023-24 20, year. Um, so to the extent we can use this funding over more than one year, um, it's not as one time, <laughs> um, but of course um, we are, um, will be creating temporary general fund savings by transferring allowable expenses. And then yeah. they, can, um, they can allow more flexibility in the, in the, in the future. Any, what were, is that? Nicole has her hand Nicole. Right. Hi, Nicole. <laughs> it's me again. Um, yeah, thanks. So thank you for creating all of these tracking tools. I really like, they are really, really helpful. Um, I super appreciate it. I'm trying to get my brain around. Uh, like... oh, Brent's here. Yay, Brent's here. <laughs> <laughs> Just arriving. Nice to see you. <laughs> Hi, Brent. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, so I'm trying to get my head around the concept of at the we talked about at the beginning that we have to basically cut, I'm gonna call it five million from the ongoing budget, starting with the 22-23 school year mm -hmm. with the reduction in headcount or the reduction in student count. And then right. I'm trying to marry that with this with the you know really long list of additional spend that we you know are be a need right or the things that have been added mm -hmm. um i definitely understand there's a lot of one-time things that can be paid for with the one-time COVID money and that completely makes sense like we you know taking that off the table i'm still i'm still in my mind trying to understand how i put together the two things of having to cut five million dollars but then there's you know, several million dollars of additional asks. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you so, want to get um, it or? <laughs> yeah, no, you do, get, you do get it. You do get it. And um, and this is something that we're grappling with as well. Um, I think um, one approach would be to prioritize the asks. Um, we obviously can't do it all. Um, we have, we've, um, I've presented the superintendents, um, his priorities. Um, I think at this point we need to, get um, to get an idea of what SBAC is thinking of in terms of their priorities. And once we've kind of narrowed that down, I don't think we're gonna obviously do 12 million or whatever that total was. Um, once we've narrowed that down, then we can see, okay, um, can we use some of this money to prevent, to assist with the cliff in 22, 23? Is that right? Yes, um, for the out year. So um, the fact that some of these funding sources actually extend out um, further than just one um, school year is something that we should take into account. And this tool is helpful in that it shows you the different uses. It shows you 
the um, what has what we've already used, um, what 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 are the uses and when the funds actually expire. So it is um, like I said, moving a lot of moving parts that we have to work on. But I think if we narrow down what you're focusing on um, to get a dollar idea of what of the do, the implications there. And then also um, with an eye on what's going on in the out year as well. Did that answer your question, Nicole? Yeah, yeah, I think so. That that helps me visualize the process we'll go through. So thank you, appreciate it. Um, so Brent, we're we're at the point where we've already looked at um, what we're taking um, to the board. And we're now trying to focus on using um, the form to kind of get an idea of what um, of what um, SBAC is thinking of in terms of um, their priorities. So, did, did you have anything else? You, I think there was a question um, earlier about one of the items that were on the list that was an Ed Services question and Denise I think you had a question for the superintendent yeah I had I had actually two questions one was um, professional development about integrated ED strategies into uh, into daily instruction I was wondering if it was a district PD or just a, a site PD so that was one question. And the other was uh, the timeline of the uh, supplemental grant that was uh, approved at the last board and with SSC, because it's for SSC is very complicated. It's the last month we can meet, then, then parents are gone, and we have to finalize the plan. And it's complicated to know when those grants will be approved, then we can include them in the budget. So that was more about the the process and timeline, or does SSC approve a deficit budget, hoping for, you know, like uh, I would like to know about the process and timeline for the supplemental grants. Those are both really good questions, Denise. I'm jealous of wherever you are right now, by the way. Um, so the first um, question about uh, integrated ELD. So there is no plan necessarily at the moment. Um, our thinking is that um, we would like to be able to um, emphasize or rather help our teachers understand what integrated ELD looks like in the classrooms um, in multiple subject areas. When we do that, we're imagining doing that as um, some form of district wide training or support. Um, perhaps at the beginning of the year or using our very limited professional development days. Uh, and as well, um, introducing supports to our school sites through ELD teachers and literacy coaches to support teachers to, um, to use those practices. I'm, I'm hoping that's helpful, but we're imagining both central trainings and some site-based support. Um, and then in terms of the grant approval, um, you know, this is all very new to us as well. So we just got this sort of restorative restart grant application out to schools just last week. Um, we imagine that schools are beginning their discussions about how they would use those dollars. Um, we'd like to do a very quick review process, uh, nothing too extensive. And what I imagine is that in nearly all cases, um, schools plan for the use of the COVID dollars would be approved by, by central office. Um, so I'd, I'd love to answer a little bit more in terms of timing, um, but my sense is that what teachers and, sorry, what schools include in that grant process um, is, is most likely acceptable. I hope that was helpful, Denise. Uh, Pauline, you're muted right now. I'll mute. Denise, are you, is that, did that answer your question? Denise is missing in action. So, um, so I was actually on this slide about our tracking tool. Um, 
And um, we looked at it the last time. Um, it's a laundry list. I mean, it goes this way. But um, there are significant, all our funding sources, the balances, and the expiration date um, is here. Um, but at this point, um, this is our link to the possible expenses that I shared with you earlier. So if you click on this, it, um, it also brings up the list of the unfunded um, items. And then um, we were asking, um, wondering if at this point, if this is a good idea for you guys to use this, um, this form to start ranking um, our, our investments that we have um, to possible expenses or unfunded expenses at this time. Um, can I get an idea if this is something that you guys want to do or um, is this a good time, Brent, you think? This is a yeah, it seems great to me, Polly. Okay, so um, I'm going to ask you um, if you click on the link, does anybody need the link? Um, if you have this in your slide deck, you should be able to open the link. I'm thinking, Don't, right? What slide, what slide is it on the deck? Oh, sorry, I see it at 55. Great. Yeah, we have a lot of skipped slides. So, so this is um this is a form that um Matt, this is my no my second form actually. Um, Max has helped me um put together this form just to get an idea of um what you're thinking in terms of ranking um which um which priority you're focusing on. So um, the one is not at all important and five is extremely important. So, um, so in terms of looking at our list, this should capture everything that's on that outstanding list. So why don't I give you um, a minute to look at the list? Um, and if you have any questions about the list, um, you can just, um, just let me know. And then, um, and then we can, um, you can start looking at this form, filling it out, and then um, we can capture the feedback um, based on on um, on your answers to the form. So, any questions? So, Brent, should I give like ten minutes, five minutes, five? Okay, so let's give you five minutes to. Um, to look, you could scroll back through the um, the priorities that, that are unfunded, or you can click on the link to the priorities that are unfunded, and then you can um, you can actually rank the priorities based on this form. And if you have any questions, you can let me know. And if there's something here, um, if something that you're thinking about that's not here, you can email. Um, you can email Vivian. I think you all have. I'll put Vivian's email address in the link. I'll, I'll, Pauline, I'll just say that, um, and I'm, I would imagine a couple other people are in the same boat that uh, I don't know that I know enough about all of these items to be able to compare and prioritize one over the other. So, but do you have a feel for one um, just in terms of going through um, a lot of them are ed services based. Some of them are business services in terms of escape. Um, SPED is something um, programmatic that, um, you know, I mean, they're all important, but um, you may have an idea. Okay, I'll, I'll give a, yeah, I'll, I'll take a stab at it. All right. Okay. Denise, you have a question? Uh, yes. Concern. Sorry, Denise. We can't hear. We can't hear you. You're breaking up. Say again, Denise. Yes, uh, my my concern was that um, I'm here to like represent the Berkeley PTA, and uh, so for me, it's it. Usually, what I do is I bring the feedback to the the, the board, and then they. They give insight, so I don't know if like the process for rep like me. I don't know if I can give my answer or if I you have some time for me to to uh, 
bring that to the Berkeley PTA board? Um, you I, can I jump sure. in? Pauline? Sure. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I think um, Pauline. First, a question for you: Does does the survey have uh, a place where somebody can note what group they are part of? Um, I think we did say that. Let me check. Um, Yeah, the organization. Um, so you could like list what organization you're with. Yeah, so Denise, if you were to respond now as an SBAC member, um, but you could provide the link to PTA council members um, and they could either individually fill this out noting that they're a member of PTA council um, or if the president preferred fill this out, you know, attempt to create consensus and fill it out together. But I think it would be easier if individual members of PTA Council use the link to comment. They have a deadline? Uh, I can't remember when the next PTA Council meeting is. Do you, do you happen to recall, Denise? No, I don't remember neither, but I can ask. You know, we're um, in the process of um, collecting feedback. I imagine if it were within the next couple of weeks that it's still actionable for us. We've got, you know, a good six weeks of deliberations in front of us before we're, you know, bringing final recommendations to the board. Um, so everybody has access to the form, right? Um, as a chat. Oh, generally it's Monday for Lindsay says generally it's Monday for PTA council meetings. Um. Pauline, can I ask about one of the line items? It's a big one. The um, Sure, go ahead. It's the second to last one. Site central office moved to COVID-based salaries and benefits, $3 million one time. What is that, $3 million? Oh, so we were thinking um, if we needed to um, relieve the general fund of whatever dollar amount, um, we could, um, if we needed three millions, 
$3 million, we could actually move that. But in the suggested amount, um, it was to cover the cost of escape. So the do even though it says $3 million one time, that was more of a, um, a strategy. Um, but the actual dollar impact that we were looking at was um, $708,000. And that's something that, um, you know, you could decide whether that's, um, you would prefer to move costs to cover that amount or to cover something else. Okay, so that's the escape, escape technology yeah. platform. Okay, good, yeah. thanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, anybody needs more time or how are you guys feeling? Um, I know it's kind of rushed and it's a lot of information. Um, One more minute. Um, I'll give you two, how about that? <laughs> that will bring us almost to, to um, 5.30. Why don't you guys just keep working on this and um, I will check in. Um, just give me a thumbs up or uh, some kind of indication when you're, just put it in the chat when you're ready. Can I ask a question? This is Tanya. Sure, Tanya. So the McKinney-Vento counselor move to AB 86, what's that? Um, AB 86 is an, um, a COVID funding. So it will be moving to COVID. Hey, Pauline, just to check in, should we start, should we start wrapping up? Um, yeah, I think we should. Um, we should, um, I think um, folks can work on this on their own. You have access to the form um, and I will be collecting the information. So 
Um, I could probably look at this um, today's Tuesday, probably by Thursday. Um, hopefully, um, if you have any questions, you can email Vivian um, and we'll respond. Um, you know, she will share that with me. Um, our next meeting is scheduled for the 18th. Um, I don't think we need to meet um, before that, Brent, do you? Or do you have anything? No, I else? think if we can meet in two weeks, that'll work really well. Okay. And then um, we will be bringing, um, we'll be, I'll share the ranking um, of the priorities with you at that time. And then we hope to, um, we would know by then um, the governor's proposal, as well as our assumptions for enrollment and ADA. So we'll have a little bit more information to share with you at that time. So, um, and if there are any questions, we used to, we used to um, ask for additional data or anything um, that still stands. If there's any additional information that you need, um, you can also um, email Vivian. So I think that's it. Um, we covered a lot today. Thank you for sticking with us while we did it. And um, uh, Brent, did you have anything else that you needed to wrap up? No, thanks so much, Pauline. I appreciate your work on all of this. And thanks to all of our um, committee members. We really appreciate your time today and over the course of the season. Thank you. Okay, so we'll see you on the 18th. All right, bye guys. All right, bye, bye everybody. Thank you all, see you then. Bye.